Olympic Lyon was once a titan of French football, winning a record seven consecutive league titles in the 2000s, which is a level of dominance France had never seen before. Today, however, they're in a state of crisis, going winless in the opening eight games of the season and face the threat of relegation if things don't turn around soon. This is a shocking reversal of fortune, and in this video, we're going to be looking at what exactly has happened to Olympic Lyon. But first, we have to briefly cover their rise, which began in 1987 when Jean-Michel Erlas became Lyon's president. At the time, Lyon were languishing down in the second division, with zero league titles to their name. Erlas was determined to transform the club into one of Europe's elite, and so he wrote off Lyon's debt, and in just a couple seasons, the club had won promotion to the top flight. They ended up securing a fifth place finish in their second season there, qualifying for the UEFA Cup. The next few years were a bit of roller coaster rides, but then in the 2001 02 season, Lyon achieved what they had always dreamed of. They had become the champions of France, but this was just the beginning. Lyon embarked on a historic streak, winning the league for seven seasons straight feat that PSG with all their riches hasn't even come close to replicating. In Lyon's 7 title winning season, they also secured the Coupe de France, doing the double for the first time in the club's history. These trophies were won by Alain Perrin in his debut season as Lyon's manager, but surprisingly, Erlas wasn't satisfied with this achievement and Perrin left the club that summer. Erlas no longer cared that much about domestic success, he wanted to conquer Europe. This is why the club went through four managers during their 7 league title run as each season, Lyon experienced Champions League heartbreak, never going beyond the quarterfinals. This dismissal in particular though was very harsh, as it was the eventual winners Manchester United who knocked out Lyon, narrowly beating them 2-1 on aggregate. Alas' ambition is what elevated Lyon to the peak of French football, but it started to take its toll and they haven't won the league since. That same year, Lyon lost one of their brightest stars, Hazen Ben Arthur. Alongside Karim Benzema, Ben Arthur was one of the squad's most promising talents, so losing him to Marseille in a deal clouded with controversy was a bit of pill to swallow. The following season marked the start of Lyon's decline as they finished third in the league, six points by Marseille and nine points by the Champions Bordeaux. They also got knocked out in the UCL round of 16, losing to yet another eventual winner of Barcelona. Benzema then departed for Real Madrid after this failure of season, and Leon also bid farewell to their legend Juninho, who was there for all seven of their league titles. Despite these losses, Leon finally went on a deep Champions League run, beating Real Madrid in the round of 16, and then the reigning league on champions Bordeaux in the quarters, before bowing out in the semi-final to Bayern Munich. However, the domestic fortunes continued to crumble, finishing 6 points behind the champions Marseille. The subsequent season was even worse, with Lyon finishing 12 points adrift of the title winners Lille, whilst Benzema came back to horn them in the UCL, scoring both legs of the round of 16. Then in the summer, the Qatari takeover of PSG was completed, ending any hope Lyon had of reclaiming their position as a dominant force in French football. Since the takeover, PSG have had a net spend of 1 billion euros, hence why they've been able to claim 9 of the last 11 league titles. However, PSG's takeover doesn't explain Lyon's 7th and 8th place finishes in recent years, as well as their current plight, which is largely down to the club itself. One of their most notorious mistakes came in 2019, when Erlas named club legend Juninho as Lyon's sporting director, a decision he would come to regret. His appointment accelerated Lyon's downward trajectory, and Erlas even publicly stated, I made a mistake by giving him the reins when he wasn't ready at all. Juninho's first decision was to appoint his former teammate Alvinho as Lyon's head coach, when the Brazilian had only ever served as an assistant manager. As expected, Silvino was out of his depth managing a club of Lyon's stature, resulting in a 7 game winner streak just 9 matches into the season. With Lyon languishing just 1 point above the relegation zone, Silvino was sacked and replaced by Rudy Garcia. Under Garcia, Lyon made their way to the Champions League semi final defeated Man City along the way, albeit in a one-legged tie due to the ongoing pandemic. Things weren't so bright in the league, however, as with the emergence of COVID-19, the league on season was cancelled. The final table was calculated by points per game basis, which left Lyon down in 7th place, a pivotal moment in the decline. Failing to qualify for Europe for the first time since the mid-1990s, men Lyon missed out on vital revenue and the subsequent season saw their financial struggles escalate. This was down to Ligue 1's 3.25 billion euro TV deal with MediaPro collapsing, sending every professional club in France, bar PSG, into a state of financial crisis. Lyon in particular had to resort to selling key players like Bruno Guimaraes and Maxwell Cornet. The club amassed nearly 100 million euros from player sales that season, but only 20 million was reinvested into player signings. Unsurprisingly, the loss of key players and lackluster reinvestment triggered a plummet from 4th place in the 2020-21 season to 8th place in the 2021-22 season. And then in the summer of 2022, Lucas Pacatar left the club and no suitable replacement was brought in, 
amplifying your troubles. The club ended up losing four games in a bounce under manager Peter Bosch early on into the season seen him be sacked just a year into his time there. His replacement was Laurent Blanc, but this was hardly an inspiring move. Since leaving PSG in 2016, Blanc only had one managerial job, a two-year stint at Ryan in Qatar. His tactics were outdated, and by the end of the season, Lyon had finished in seventh place. Despite this, he was allowed to stay on board for this current season, where he then oversaw one of the worst starts in the club's history. With one point in the opening four matches, Lyon's fans were desperate for him to go putting up banners telling him to resign. But with the hefty payoff he'd receive if he was sacked, Blanc had no interest in resigning and seemed unbothered by the whole situation. After a 4-1 loss to Montpellier, when asked what had to be changed, Blanc replied, you have to change the manager. With the club sitting rock bottom in the league, Leon did exactly that and replaced Blanc with Fabio Grosso. However, he hasn't had an instant impact, as in the three games he's overseen, Leon have lost twice and drawn another match 3-3 after being 3-1 up at half time. If things don't change soon, then the future is looking bleak for Leon and Fabio Grosso has admitted that Lyon are in a fight to retain their top flight status. The decision to retain Blanc for the season and appoint Grosso wasn't down to Erlas though, as in December 2022, Lyon had a change in ownership for the first time in 35 years. Eilas sold 80% of his stake in Lyon to American businessman Textor for 884 million euros. And at the end of the season, Eilas resigned as Lyon's president. Textor has shares in multiple clubs, including 40% in Premier League side Crystal Palace, 90% in Botafogo, who are top of the Brazilian league, and 80% of Belgian side RWD Molenbeek, who won promotion under his ownership. Although Textor's other clubs are doing well, his time at Lyon has been filled with challenges. Despite injecting 86 million euros into the club, Lyon has encountered troubles with the DNCG, France's football finance regulators. Back in July, the DNCG announced that it will be sanctioning the league and club due to apparent irregularities in the budget they presented for the forthcoming season, which saw Lyon's summer spending be heavily restricted. During the summer, the club once again lost some of their best players, with a notable sale being 21-year-old Bradley Barcola, who left for PSG. Moussa Dembele and Hussein Alwa, who were once Lyon's brightest players, also left, both on free deals. The club is essentially being ransacked of all their best players, and with their financial situation, quite a few of their signings have been old players for cheap. With Lyon's squad putting in underwhelming performances and lacking chemistry, the club's ultras have berated their players, but their critical words has done little to improve the team's form. When you take everything into account, Lyon's decline starts to make sense, but I don't think anyone could have predicted their season to start as badly as it has.